Hello and welcome to Further Adventures in Sociology and Criminology. I'm Danielle McCartney, I'm your host, and today we're going to be talking about conflict criminology. Let's get started. Conflict criminology has its roots in Marxist theory. Conflict theory can be separated into two broad categories, pluralistic or liberal conflict theory and radical or Marxist conflict theory. Liberal or pluralistic conflict theorists view conflict between a wide variety of groups in society. So between various social groups, religious groups, political groups, ethnic groups, economic factions, and so on. They see conflicts emerging in response to particular situations or events that bring into sharp relief groups' competition for social or economic advantage. Liberal conflict theorists support policies to reform the criminal justice system and society as a whole to address the unequal distribution of power. The second group is radical or Marxist conflict theory. Radical conflict theorists are largely influenced by Karl Marx. They see social conflict mainly in terms of a struggle between social classes and in the context of the structured inequalities of capitalist societies. Marxist criminologists tend to advocate for a revolutionary overthrow of existing power systems as the only way to solve power differentials and conflict. So for example, Marxist criminological theories would advocate for radical change like prison abolition, that we should reduce or eliminate prisons and the prison system and then replace the prison system with systems of rehabilitation that don't place a focus on punishment and government institutionalization. So they argue that capitalist economies create incentives to increase, for example, the prison population, not to rehabilitate prisoners. Both radical and liberal conflict theorists are interested in why and how some groups are defined as deviant and how deviant behavior becomes illegal thanks to the application of power in the legal system. So the two basic questions that all conflict theorists focus on are, one, why are certain groups more likely to be considered deviant? And two, why are some harmful actions not considered deviant or criminal? Conflict theorists see social conflict as central to any theoretical explanation of crime or deviance. They reject the idea that societies are based on a shared consensus about important norms and values. Conflict theorists assume that the most important feature of any complex society is conflict between various segments or groups in society that differ in terms of social power and resources. So to answer the questions, why are certain groups more likely to be considered deviant and why are certain behaviors more likely to be considered deviant, conflict theorists look to the unequal distribution of power and resources. The dominant social group wants to hold on to its power and resources. So that is, why are some groups and activities considered deviant and others aren't? Power. So from this perspective, if something about the population or behavior challenges the interests of the powerful group, that problem population or behavior needs to be controlled. In Toward a Marxian Theory of Deviance, Steven Spitzer focuses specifically on economic class struggles in the Marxist sense and argues that people or behaviors that are more likely to be seen as deviant are ones that challenge, one, the capitalist modes of appropriating the product of human labor. So that means when the poor steal from the rich, both theft in rich neighborhoods or pilfering from jobs, these are all seen as appropriating the product of human labor. So this is going against capitalism because they are not working for an employer. They are doing something that is challenging capitalism by trying to get the products themselves without going through the official capitalist channels. Behaviors are also likely to be seen as deviant if they challenge the social conditions under which capitalist production takes place. So for people who are unable to work, to perform wage labor, 
or people who refuse to perform wage labor, they are challenging those social conditions that capitalism puts in place. So people who are unemployed or people who are unable to hold a job because of a disability status or because they don't have the right credentials. These are all challenging the social conditions. Homeless people would be in this category because they're challenging the conditions under which capitalism takes place. And then number three, people or behaviors that challenge the patterns of distribution and consumption in capitalist society. So for example, people who use drugs for escape or transcendence rather than sociability and adjustment. So this is saying people who withdraw, people who don't participate in the process of labor and production and consumption are more likely to be treated as deviant. And this could include people who do things like dumpster diving or who make their own clothes or who just don't participate in the consumption patterns that are expected, as well as the participatory activities that we're supposed to do to distribute goods and services. People or behaviors that challenge the process of socialization for productive and non-productive roles are also more likely to be seen as deviant. So these could be, you know, young people that refuse to go to school and participate in the educational system so that they can get a job and become a laborer or even for those people who question the traditional family form, if you're going against monogamous marriage, the nuclear family, that challenges the socialization process into capitalism. And so according to Spitzer and other Marxist and conflict theorists, that is much more likely to be labeled as a deviant behavior. And then challenging the ideology which supports the functioning of capitalist society is also much more likely to be seen as deviant. So people that are proposing alternative forms of social organization, people who want to live in a communal society, people who advocate for socialist policies and sharing the distribution of wealth that's going to be much more likely to be seen as deviant under a capitalist system, according to the conflict theorists. So according to the conflict perspective, behavior is not inherently deviant. Deviance is caused by economic and political forces in society. And once a behavior is marked as deviant because it contradicts the interests of the powerful group, the behavior can actually become criminal because criminal law and the criminal justice system are used as vehicles for controlling the poor of society. Criminalizing behavior that goes against the powerful group means that powerful groups can have people jailed and fined mm -hmm. and punished for going against their interests. And the rest of us see this as a normal and natural part of the criminal justice system instead of questioning why we have these laws instead of some other laws. So why does the criminal justice system serve the rich and powerful instead of the entire population or the population who are most disadvantaged, conflict theorists ask? Well, that's it for a very brief overview of conflict criminology. Hope you learned a lot. See you next time.